what's up coders welcome to one little coder in this python tutorial i'm going to teach you three simple panda tricks that can make your life better i don't know whether it will make your life better but at least it can make your pandas experience better so this is a little bit of a clickbaity title that panda tricks might make your life better i'm sorry for that but in general i think these tricks are going to be extremely helpful if you work in pandas day in and day out and if you have not subscribed to our channel i would strongly recommend you or request you to subscribe to our channel because because 90% of our visitors are not subscribers which means they just come watch a video and then they go they never get notification about the wonderful content at least i believe the wonderful content that we share on the channel so without further ado let's get started so i've got a data set from kaggle so this kaggle data set is tabular playground mars 2022 data set if you are not familiar with that usually kaggle competitions are these days you would see a computer vision problem or you would see nlp problem but still they run a tabular playground data set tabular playground competition that doesn't give you any medal but uh, it gives you an opportunity to check your classical machine learning algorithms um, with tabular data set this is a wonderful place for you to try out a lot of different things especially given that in a in it's still like in an enterprise context like for me somebody like me we work primarily with tabular data set some some text is there but mostly tabular data set so i've used that data set and what are the three tricks that we are going to see the three tricks that we are going to see is three different pandas method and one will help us select a type of column two will help us format the data frame Three will help us round off date and time, and I'm going to show you every single thing with the method. And in this notebook, you have got the documentation link as well. This notebook would be linked in the YouTube description. So if you want to check out this code, all you have to do is go click below the like button. Maybe you can click the like button as well, and you would see this Kaggle notebook, and you can click it and copy edit it. This will be available for you. So this data set, all I need is pandas. I don't need numpy. In fact, I don't need any of these things. But I'm just trying to show you that this data frame has uh, this competition has got three files at this point. It has got sample, submission, train, and test. I'm using only train because this is just a demonstration purpose. I'm not participating in this competition. The first thing that I'm doing is I'm reading the CSV file from the train.csv, and after I read it. I'm going to just simply look at the head as all of us do. So I've got head printed here. So we have got row ID, time, x, y, direction, and congestion. So the first thing that I want to show you is how do we get numeric and categorical columns? You would have probably known a lot of different methods and varieties to do this thing. I usually, what I usually do is I would look at you know train dot d types, and then I would. I would try to identify the object, then I would use it. But I don't think that's that's a very nice way for me to do it. So what I want to introduce you is to a new method that says train dot select d types. So select d types is a pandas method that helps you select a particular type of column. For example, I want to find out, or or not even columns. Um, yeah, I want to select all the columns that are. Object, which is like categorical column, so I can get everything that is categorical. Let's say I want to pick only that are um, numeric, so I can say numeric, and then I'm going to get it. Maybe I don't want to do these things. What I want to do is I want to just simply print out like a summary at the top of my analysis to say that in my given data set, these are the categorical columns and these are the numerical columns. So you know that we have got a row ID which is numeric x, y, and uh, congestion. These are numeric. And then we have got time and direction, which are categorical. So I have to read it again for you to see time because I've messed up with the code. So let me do it one more time so you can see this. Now I'm going to just use f string in Python to say the train dot select d types of object. What is this going to give me? This is going to give me something that looks like this. But I'm going to take the columns of it and I'm going to convert into a list. So this will help me print this text that says categorical columns are time and direction. Numerical columns are row ID, X, Y, and congestion. So this helps me print as a summary. So I can create like a template or a VS code, VS code snippet that will help me quickly print the, the types of columns, uh, especially like if I want to see at the start, before I start with the machine learning uh, XGBoost or whatever that kind of stuff that you do. So this is this is extremely helpful. Select D types and I can convert, take those columns and convert into a list. So select D type is the first method that I wanted to introduce you. And at this notebook, like you can see, 
uh, at the end that you have got uh, the documentation which you can check it out the second one is a very simple method that will help us format the data frame so if you've got a data frame that looks like this and I don't know how many of you have used Excel. A lot of people in data science do not like to use Excel. I love Excel. I love uh, Google spreadsheet. One of the things that I would love to usually do is when I've got a data frame, uh, sorry, I'm saying data frame. When I've got an Excel sheet, I would like to apply conditional formatting and then see how the numbers look, which one is maximum, which one is minimum, how the numbers are spread. That gives me pleasure. And it also, it helps me formulate what kind of insights that I can see mentally. So the same thing, people usually say, oh, I cannot do this in Excel. This is quite, uh, I cannot do this in Pandas, Python. It's not, it's not very intuitive and convenient. But, but what people do not know is there is a nice method called dot style dot background gradient where you can give a palette value and that will help you paint your data frame, format your data frame in the particular palette value that you gave. So for simplicity, I've taken only like what we learned in the first section, I've taken all the numeric values. Okay. And then for the numeric values, I've taken only the head value. I can take 10. And for that, I've given the style dot style dot background gradient. And in the, in the palette value color palette, I'm giving this yellow color, red, yellow, red, orange, red dish. So we have got yellow, orange, red. Right. So when you run this, you basically see this that you can see the row ID being um, color palette, like conditional formatting zero doesn't change then zero. Then you have got condition, the condition value. But if you want to change the palette, I would like to show you different palettes. So this is pastel. You can see the values of pastel. And then I can also show you one more palette that might make it slightly easier. This is word is um, it's quite a popular palette. So you can again see the color changing from maximum color to minimum, maximum value to minimum value. And I usually find this really, really a very useful experience when I have to look at the raw data. Like, I don't know how many of you have seen Jeremy Howard saying Jeremy Howard, co-founder of fast.ai usually advocates as to look at the data set with your naked eye. Um, and I, I think that is an extremely useful exercise. So if you are going to do that, this conditional formatting, the name that comes from the spreadsheet world, the Excel world, but here the background gradient for your pandas data frame can extremely be helpful for you to visualize what you can do with your data set. And then it can also help you understand some anomaly spots when you look at the data set. So this is the second tip that I wanted to share today. And you have got, like I said, you've got the documentation at the end of this process. And then the third one is how do we round off time? So this is another easy way that I recently came across. So let's say that we have got the time variable, but right now, if you see this time is, um, is a text, it's a character. So the first thing that I'm doing is I'm converting the time into uh, the date time variable, but maybe in your data frame, you already have, have this, you don't have to do this, but just for demonstration purposes, I'm doing this. I'm going to say convert character into date time object. Okay. So I'm first converting it into date time object. Then I'm converting the date time object into an index. So now it becomes date time index. What a terrible mistake, right? I've just called it uh, train. So I'm going to run this. And after that, I'm going to run this. And I'm going to call this train with DT. I'm going to call it train DT. After I do that, when I print train DT, let me print that. In fact, I'll print only the index. When I print the index, what do you see? You can see that there is a date value and there is a time value in our data set. It is going till seconds, but most like what you see here, like maybe I can put tail. Um, oh, they sorry, tail. When you see everything has seconds zero, so which means our data set is already somehow rounded to only minutes, right? That's why you see 40, 40, all these things. But the point is, maybe sometimes you do not have a data set that is rounded off to minute, sometimes you want to round it off to seconds. Sometimes you want to round it off to a minute. Sometimes you want to round it off to an hour. So if you see this data set, this is 1140. You can see 1140 here and you can see 1140 here. So now I'm going to show you how you can simply use the same method that you are already familiar with, which is the round method. But because we are dealing with the date time index, 
this round method instead of taking um, taking a decimal uh, rounding figure value it's going to help you round the date time index value so i would say train dt dot index dot round and i want it to be rounded to an hour value so when i do that you can see the difference so from 11 40 this has become 12 o'clock from 11 40 this has become 12 o'clock if i say okay maybe let, let me add a new cell so that this comes at the top yeah so if i say that instead of rounding it off to an hour round it off to a day i can round it off to a day now so i have this different frequencies um this is this is called offset this is called offset alias um i think i had uh, mentioned in the description but if not i would link that in the disc i would link that in the notebook by the time you see this video so you can check you can see what are the offset values offset aliases that you can use like second like second is one thing uh, if you have got nanosecond you can round it off to second you can see all these frequencies to which you can round it off so this could be extremely helpful for example if you want to do a rolling date if you want to do a rolling hour if you want to do um, some kind of roll up or aggregation this could be extremely helpful where you don't have to do a lot of hack but simply uh, all you have to do is round off that value to a particular time offset and then you're, you're good to go so this is this is another useful function uh, useful method pandas method extremely useful for date time index rounding off and and you know it has like much more possibilities than what i'm currently showing you you can definitely check it out in the documentation link that i would i would give it in the uh, the kaggle notebook so that's it that's that's all i had this is a very short video where we looked at three pandas methods that probably can make your pandas experience better let me know in the comments if you had already known this or if you know some trick that is very 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 useful to you but i have not covered it i would love to know about it but other than that i hope you stay safe happy coding